Hari Om to all. Hari Om. Let us start with the prayer and take the blessings of the Guru and the Guru Parampara. Antar Jyoti Hi, Bahir Jyoti Hi, Pratyak Jyoti Hi, Parat Para, Jyoti Reva Jyoti Hi, Swayam Jyoti Hi, Atma Jyoti Hi, Shivosmyaham. Anta Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwaraha, Guru Sakshat Parabrahma, Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha. Akanda Mandala Karam, Vyaptam Yena Characharam, Tatvadam Darshitam Yena, Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha. Sadashiva Samaram Bham, Shankaracharya Madhyamam, Asmadacharya Paryantam, Vande Guru Parampara, Narayana Samaram Bham, Shankaracharya Madhyamam, Asmadacharya Paryantam, Vande Guru Parampara. Hello. So this is the prayer that uh, usually all the AVAC follow what Guruji has told us. There is some order to this and this will be followed. Maybe I will share it with you in the WhatsApp group also. So That's that uh, uh, everybody can get to know about it. Yeah. Uh, so with our uh, previous session, we had uh, discussed the first talk, first video talk of Guruji on Tattva Bodha. That is uh, nothing but uh, the knowledge of supreme truth. And uh, uh, what is it that Shankaracharya uh, has told us in uh, Tattva Bodha is the understanding of the essential nature, that is, of the human being, that is me as the Atma and the world as the Brahman. And the relationship between those two is what we saw in the first talk. And then uh, uh, moving on uh, to the second uh, talk, uh, any of you can uh, start with uh, the understanding of what you have uh, got about the second uh, video. Who would go first? Anyone can go first. Okay. Shall I start? Hmm. Okay. So, uh, in the second video, uh, so again, same uh, thing, Prabhuji was saying that uh, Tattva Bodha is about uh, knowing about the essential nature. Uh, and uh, he took the example of, uh, uh, of a clay pot or a clay uh, glass. And uh, he said that when you look at that glass, which is made out of clay, you, you first, um, uh, because all of us are still not understood the essential nature, for us it is very common to first notice it as a container rather than understand that it's essential nature, which is clay. We, we always identify with the form or the name of things or even of human beings. So... That is the main thing that because we uh, don't know that there is something more than this name and form. The truth of the matter is that we are never taught that there is more to this uh, life uh, than this name and form. We are so tuned to just noticing the name and form of things. And like Prabhuji gave that example, you only notice the glass. You don't notice that it is made out of mud. The glass can fall down and break. It can be destroyed. But you can never destroy the clay with which it is made. So in, in that uh, same way, for humans also, we have this essential nature of being the Atman. But we always identify with only the name and the form. And uh, we have no awareness that there is more to this life than that uh, name and form. 
So Prabhuji was drawing again attention to that essential nature only uh, with the help of an example in the second video also. Um, yeah, you've told it uh, clearly as to what uh, Guruji has told in this talk too. Uh, Vaishnaviji, you can uh, uh, tell your understanding. Uh, as uh, in continuation with uh, Sudhaji, uh, I would also add uh, the example Guruji stated in the video. He talks about how in the during the coronation ceremony, Hanuman was gifted a very precious uh, pearl necklace, and then uh, to him it was nothing but uh, an ordinary necklace. It could have been really dear to uh, Sita Sita Ma because uh, she she literally took it off of her and uh, gifted uh, Hanuman. But then he uh, breaks the necklace and then keeps biting each pearl and in in a, in a bit to understand if there is Rama inside. So that essentially tells us how the name and form, the external nature of anything, is. It's just a partial understanding of what things are. And the the essential nature or the Atman within within it, the 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 uh, say the, the the example of the clay pot, the clayness of the the container is the essential nature. And if you the moment the essential nature is lost, uh, the, the the moment the clay is clay is lost, then there is nothing left. So then, our uh, uh, our uh, uh, inference of associating something with its physical uh, nature is uh, quite superficial. Uh, very well said, uh, Vaishnaviji. So basically, uh, we uh, focus only on the name and form. So if it is human beings, it is the person as such we just uh, focus. And if it is, uh, what is the essential nature of that human being that is the person, we just don't ever see. For ourselves only, we don't apply that. And uh, forget about the others. Maybe you are sitting here, I see Sudhaji, I see Vaishnaviji. But what is it that Tattva Bhoda is telling us through Shankaracharya and through Prabhuji is that we have to see the Atman Present that is the Atma is the essential nature of all of us here. And the object, maybe we are using the laptop or mobile or whatever. The objects is what? Maybe the surroundings, the trees, the table on which or the chair on which we are sitting. All these are nothing but uh, the objects. And what is that essential nature of these are nothing but God or Brahman. So like, uh, as you all said, uh, uh, the glass that is uh, made of uh, uh, clay Clay is not at all thought of. It is only the shape of the vessel. Maybe it may be glass, it may be spoon, it may be a uh, plate, whatever. So the essential nature is forgotten. In the same way, we forget our Atma, but we think of our body as, or uh, the whole uh, person as such, as this uh, name and form. And that is what we concentrate on. So this is so fundamental uh, that Tattva Bodha is telling us uh, we will have to be in our Atma, is what something uh, uh, that is being told here. So that must be remembered. That's why it is a basic fundamental text, wherein uh, further uh, down the line, whatever uh, higher uh, books that we study, uh, we should have this foundation. So this is something that is uh, really nice. Um, do you have anything that uh, needs to be added? You can add. In from this uh, video, no, I I think this uh, second talk is clear to me. Uh, uh, let me ask you a question: Why is it that we should know this Atma? Anyway, we are uh, uh, doing our work, and uh, uh, maybe we are continuing our life. Why is it so important that we should know the essential nature? So I think uh, to answer that question, we'll be taking a bit of uh, the third talk that that has been given by Prabhuji. And also what we are all facing in our daily lives, mm -hmm. that though you 
are doing like you said you are living your life you have everything you are working you have children you have husband all your activities are going on you have physical health but why we have all come to prabhu ji because some way we all know that whatever we have is not enough there is something more that we want and we have not found it in any aspect of our life that is why we are all going to prabhu ji because we somehow feel that lack of fulfillment that lack of uh, you know completeness in us so actually and to answer your question are are the very reason that we have gone to prabhu ji is the answer that because we are all identified with the superficial we have body mind intellect we have everything in our lives husband wife children job everything is going on but we are not feeling complete or happy because we have not identified ourselves with our essential nature which is the atman which is in other words god we have not discovered ourselves to be the atman and we know that uh, you know prabhu ji is going to help us which is why we are, are all uh, joining in this uh, atma jyoti uh, foundation because when you identify with the superficial you are always searching searching unhappy or maybe it's not this experience maybe it's the next experience next experience maybe it's tomorrow maybe it's next year that will make me happy but if you understand that none of this can give you that lasting happiness and finding yourself as the atman which is above all these name form happiness sorrow everything and if you are established and discovered yourself as the atman then and only then you are going to be happy somewhere that feeling comes in our lives that is why we are searching to uh, ways to identify and become the atma very well said uh, vaishnavi ji um maybe from next time onwards i can put uh, individual questions because it will be difficult for you to answer most of it uh, maybe sudha ji would have answered maybe one question to her or a straight question to you maybe would be better or must you take a chance in next uh, because even i would find it difficult to answer when she said that you would have answered everything <laughs> sorry <laughs> No, but she encapsulates it so beautifully. That yeah, there's yeah. nothing left to say. That's why she is left with. Uh, you are left with uh, maybe nothing. One, nothing she would have told. Two <laughs> <laughs> questions also happened the same way. Maybe once let her take that uh, first chance. You take the next the first chance. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Uh, what i what i uh, perceived is that uh, see the um, association of. Um, happiness through uh, various uh, uh, experiences uh, say it could change like how sudha ji just mentioned so our association with something not non permanent is again is as uh, uh, as wavery and uh, uh, unpredictable and uh, unless you understand the true nature the the which is the truth and which is only one uh you will keep associating with multiple things that will lead to nowhere and uh, and also uh, uh, the the fact that it is only to the truth that will actually give you happiness and anything that you perceive as truth is never is never uh, permanent or it, it is rather mom momentary and uh, very fleeting So, can you tell this with with an example? Um. Mm, uh, I can say that you know. So, say I want to. I felt uh, I am too stressed with uh, my work. I want to take a a day off. I take a day off and take another day off, and then I then to a point that it it looks like I feel useless. It's just too many too many days off. so then then doesn't give me happiness at all even though i'm resting my physically i'm i am much more uh, rejuvenated but i feel uh, i i i don't feel happy at all so then my association with rest is not the same when i was stressed and burnt out in in the office so so for me to associate but rather if i say for me to associate associate my work with being useful to people uh 
and what i do in my office helps a lot of people if so that that physical ex- exertion would never lead to mental exhaustion mm-hmm. for me i would still want to do more and more mm-hmm. and for me then rest or physical uh, 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 rest would never be even you know a, a demand so if i associate myself with something that is as physical and fleeting like uh, you know physical rest then i will uh, I, i will get over it soon but if i associate my uh, happiness with something permanent like being useful or being uh, giving happiness to somebody else then then nothing else will matter okay uh, nicely put it across uh, i would like to ask uh, vaishnavi ji another question uh, guruji says uh, if mud is removed from glass what happens then its essential nature is gone so if you apply the same thing to us what happens then there is nothing left so what is it that uh, uh, actually happens with us if such a thing happens then maybe we death dead mm-hmm. yes dead <laughs> <laughs> <So> <laughs> the essential nature is atma if the atma go, moves out of this physical body we are dead we are dead so that is what happens with the dead person also the atma moves out and the body is burnt that is what comes in the talk 3 right so that is why we will have to get to know what is our essential nature because that is permanent as uh, both of you said what is permanent and uh, what we have to uh, uh, hold on to we don't hold on we hold on to the external uh, outer objects and we hold on to our body mind and intellect so uh, the hanuman uh, story is uh, beautifully uh, correlated here we can easily remember oh when he opened the bead there was no atma in it there was no rama in it so that means say that when we have we have to open our own selves and find out the atma rama in us so that is what has been uh, told by the story so just remember the pearl necklace uh, given by sita so that must link to our uh, in our mind that it is the atma rama that we will have to find out not the uh, uh, maybe the attractive uh, bead or the uh, pearl that is there so uh, it was the monkey mind that broke the bead but here we will have to break our ego and the uh, attachment with the uh, bmi that uh, needs to be uh, understood so now that uh, we have completed the second talk we, i think we can move on to the third uh, talk mm. just uh, you can just give the uh, gist of uh, what what is the third talk there are i think two three questions he has uh, put in the video what is atma and what happens to the dead person okay so those two can be answered each one of you take one question and then answer it what is atma can be answered by sudha ji because in anyway, the question which has answered now okay so what is atma is not a question i can answer from first hand experience only what i have understood from intellectual uh, understanding ha huh, that's all whatever i have read and uh, understood my, with my mind and intellect so what is atma is firstly atma has no name and no form i think that we all know first hand because we can never see the atma anywhere with our gross eyes so atma has no name and form but it is described as a nameless formless indivisible infinite consciousness that is how i perceive atma it's infinite it's indivisible and atma is almost always equated to consciousness Uh, so how do you uh, or maybe in terms of this sattva bodha hmm. uh, how do you tell that so in terms of tattva bodha atma is the essential nature hmm. that's, that's all, all. Hmm. 
because uh, since we know so many things, uh, we'll have to stick on to this text also. Yes. So what is it text. that yeah. speaks? But, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it is nothing but the consciousness, uh, uh, which is the Atma, and that is our essential nature. Essential nature. Yes. Uh, you can add to that uh, how uh, uh, the, uh, he has explained about human and being. Yes, Prabhuji has explained in the second, third video how we are called as human beings. And we just uh, happily go around saying I'm a human being or I, I think we are human beings. But Prabhuji has very nicely broken it up to two parts. And he says that human is that part, you know, which is this name form and, uh, you know, uh, a complex of mind, body and intellect. And being is the consciousness. And it is together that uh, the uh, combination of consciousness in this body with mind and intellect that you call a human being. And when the being moves on, you know, which is equal to death, then this human... Well, let her, no... let, you know, we know for, maybe next, <laughs> let her answer. Yeah, yeah. No, so what what happens to a dead person yeah, uh, yeah. can be answered by uh, Vaishnaviji. Uh, so Guruji mentions, uh, he actually splits the more very common word, human being into two, two parts. He says human being. As long as there is no being in it then he's just a body a human is a uh, human is what we attribute the body or the mind or the intellect with uh, and it is uh, it is not permanent and it is something that is physical in nature something that you can perceive with your sense organs uh, whereas the being is a is actually the essential nature the atman and uh, it is the consciousness and it is it is the one that uh, uh, if it is the one that actually completes the circle so without the consciousness inside a body it cannot do anything it is jada so it is a dead body uh, that is what happens when uh, the dead uh, the person dies that is the consciousness moves away okay uh, so uh, the dead person is uh, an inert object which has no consciousness or atma or uh, the essential nature has uh, is not present there okay now a human is what we recognize ourselves with in human and being. So, um, superficial nature of human. How can you, how is it identified? How in our daily life do we identify ourselves? Maybe Vaishnavi Ji can answer uh, ourselves as a superficial uh, 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 nature. So, say I, I, if I call myself, I, I'm a I'm a woman. I'm a uh, I'm a doctor. Or say I'm a I'm in the service. So whatever that I attribute, say maybe I'm tall or maybe I'm stout, whatever it is, but whatever that I associate my physical attributes to, it could be my name and form or what I do. That is what the superficial nature of. Is uh, it just uh, uh, my name, uh, my name and form? Is there something else to that, to the superficial nature that we are adding to ourselves? Whatever with that we do, uh. profession-wise. Hmm. So, uh, profession, along with that profession, one little more. Gender. Okay. Um... You said you're working and uh, your name and then uh, oh, you're a woman, all those. But mm. another set is there. It's I. I am doing, I am working, I have this profession. Uh, I, 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 I comes. I am comes there. So there is one more set wherein uh, we are stuck to. What is that? The ego, ma'am? Yeah, it's mine. Mine. So I and mine are the ones 
which we are uh, holding on to as the superficial nature of human. It's not being. I and mine is what uh, we are stuck to. Correct. So uh, it's I am working, I am a uh, woman and uh, I am learning now. All this, I am enjoying this, uh, whatever uh, I am having is one uh, aspect. The other aspect is, um, as uh, I am, uh, uh, I have children, I have husband, I have uh, a parents. All these are uh, mine. I have, I possess. I and mine are the things that uh, come into picture as human, superficial nature. So being, we know it is the essential nature and uh, ignoring being is what making us to be stuck with I and mine. Okay. Huh. So what is the connection between the uh, body and the Atma or the consciousness? How is, does that work, Sudhaji? So, connection between the body and the Atman is mm -hmm. very fundamental. Mm -hmm. The Atman resides in the body. And the body is useful mm -hmm. to discover the Atman. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in the physical world, how are we working? How are we progressing? Uh, the Away from the Atman, no? We are all in the world with our senses. That is mm -hmm. how we are using the body all the time. This, mm -hmm. uh, all our senses, indriyas, our mind, our organs, everything is outwardly focused. Mm -hmm. No journey towards the Atman because only when you journey inwards, you can discover the Atman. So basically, uh, we are the body is the instrument of the Atman. So that we forget. We are thinking that instrument is present and the, the consciousness operating the whole body, we just forget that. But the instrument is what we just hold on to. So yeah. body is the instrument, but consciousness is operating through it that we forget. So uh, it is uh, both correlating together and uh, it has to move together. That is what uh, Tattva Bodha tells us and teaches us and this is made very simple by uh, Guruji. Uh, then what else would you like to add, uh, um, both of you? I, you can take up the example of uh, a constantly changing aspect. How it is... Uh, uh, not being and how it is human. Maybe Vaishnavi Chi can answer this. So the uh, physical uh, attributes, uh, there can be many. Uh, so if I say physically, you are different, I am different, uh, he, he could be different. What we do, what our names are, what our professions are, what belongs to me, the sense of what I want to do, the sense of what he wants to do, all can be different. But essentially, we are all Atman. There is no difference there. There is, There are no uh, multifactorial uh, attributes to what you call Atman. If you take yourself as a person, what is it mm -hmm. that uh, you see? What is it that changes constantly? Um, your uh, emotions change, what you're focused on, what your thinking change, uh, your thoughts are changing, your emotions. Uh, and then uh, what... Are you oh, the same 10 years ago? Driving. No. Hmm. Definitely not. Hmm. So the changes maybe... Uh, we were uh, small children and then we were uh, youths, then uh, we are at this particular age and we don't st stagnate here. We continue and we grow old and we die one day. So this constant change, though it is happening, we are not observing it. So uh, this is the body or the human aspect that changes uh, constantly, but being is constant. Being part of the life is a, a constant.
uh, he has asked one more question here. Can we have stability in life with this change? And uh, can uh, uh, there be some examples put in here so that where is it that we are not finding the stability in life? This has been uh, answered uh, partly by Sudhaji in the beginning itself. Maybe I can ask uh, Vaishnavi ji. Ma'am, when what you associate with are not stable themselves, there is no stability. So mm -hmm. if you associate yourselves with what is the uh, what the body or the mind or the intellect wants or is contemplating or is doing, uh, there are there are infinite ways uh, to get associated. So there is no stability that way. But if you are, and so which means if you are associating yourself with the physical nature of things. Then they keep changing. So then there is happiness is uh, it's quite fleeting. But if you associate it, associate with something uh, stable like the Atman, the, the true nature, then there is uh, then there are no changes in there on. So with not associating ourselves with the Atman, what is happening to us? So that you can answer. So the uh, answer will be <laughs> just a repetition of what Vaishnavji said. Because when you associate with uh, not with the Atman and uh, something that changes every day, every day, your body is growing old every day. Your mind is different every day. Some days when you wake up, it is feeling light and happy. So another day it is feeling very depressed. Another day it feels very burdened. So... These are the things with which we are identified, your body, your mind. And then you may be identified with mine, you know, my family, my wealth, my husband, my mother or, you know, my relations. And they are, they are themselves <laughs> in the human aspect. So they are also changing every day. Some days they may feel, uh, you know, like being a, your friend. Next day they may be upset about something and they may be irritable towards you. So... All the time when you're identifying with something that is not permanent, like your body, um, I, me and mine. And uh, you, of course, you're not going to find any stability. But if you identify with consciousness, which never changes, which is the truth, that is why it is called truth. Satya means something that is nitya. Nitya means eternal. It, there is no change in it. Then, then only you can find that stability in your life. So we are uh, uh, simply coping up with whatever uh, is coming in our way. We are just yeah. adjusting to it and then we don't even have uh, the concept of the Atma which is always peaceful. So we are drifted away from the path that we had to take. So that is what uh, the Sattva Bodha tells us that go into that direction, go inward, wherein the stress of life can be uh, uh, removed and we can be peaceful all the time along with the stresses. It's not that we escape from the stresses or the struggles of life, but we accept it easily. The coping mechanism will be different with the identification of the human and being. Both are two different things, but yet we don't identify at least now we have got the uh, opportunity to understand and uh, maybe we can apply it. That is what, it is not just the knowledge for the sake of the knowledge that we read all these texts, but application is very important. That is what uh, Guruji says and uh, he makes us do that. So uh, maybe we are all uh, graced by his, uh, 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 maybe we associating with him and uh, we are blessed with that. So, uh, anything more that is left out in this uh, talk three? I think uh, we are almost at the end of this talk three. Anything more to be added? So, uh, in conclusion, Prabhuji, in this talk, he says that when you are identified with your essential nature, then because the essential nature of everything and everybody around you is the same, the Atman, that is when you have peace and when you have peace then because you have identified with the essential nature and then 
you have universal love because you love you love the satya you love the nitya you love atman you love everyone as atman you don't love someone because they are your child or you don't hate someone because you think they are your enemy because you know that everything is just a manifestation of the atman yours or others anyone it is only a manifestation of the atman when you have that view in your mind all the time that this is only the atman then very naturally you start feeling a sense of uh, oneness with everyone which prabhu ji calls that universal love and once you have universal love you are bound to have lasting peace so that is what prabhu ji concluded yes. Yes, yes. It is uh, very essential to put it into practice and very well said, uh, Sudhaji. So, Sarvam Kalvidam Brahma Aham Brahmasmi. Both comes into picture. I should, I recognize the Atman within me and if I recognize each person as Atma, then that is Sarvam Kalvidam Brahma and uh, uh, the pure love just flows without any hindrances. Okay, so I think we are at the end of this uh, uh, third talk. Maybe we can increase uh, the duration because uh, it is just about half an hour. We can just have a little more, maybe three videos I'll be sending next time so that uh, we can have the uh, little more discussion also. I thought there would be another one who would be uh, attending. It would take time. Let us see how it happens. Okay. So I think it is uh, time for us to do the closing prayer. Any uh, questions that you would, uh, or clarification that uh, uh, is there? It's a very simple uh, uh, text and uh, simple talk. What Guruji has given, he has made it very simple, in fact. <laughs> if we read the text, uh, what Tattva Bodha says, maybe nothing can be understood. What Guruji says, oh, everything is known. It's so easy, that is how we feel. <laughs> So we'll end uh, this with uh, the closing prayer. Asatoma Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Mrityorma Amrutangamaya Om Shanti 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 Purnamadaha, Purnamidam, Purna, Purnamuduchate, Purnasya, Purnamadaya, Purnameva Vashishyate, Nanum, Nanim Budu, Nanala, Ideha. Mana buddhi nanalla sachidanandatma shiva nanu nane shivoham 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 atma darshanam brahma darshanam brahma darshanam satya darshanam antar jyotihi Bahir Jyotihi, Pratyak Jyotihi, Parat Para, Jyotireva Jyotihi, Swayam Jyotihi, Atma Jyotihi, Shivosmyaham, Lokaha, Samastaha, Sukhino Bhavantu, Lokaha, Samastaha, Sukhino bhavantu lokaha samastaha Sukhino bhavantu Hari Om Tatsat Shri Guru Pyo Namaha Hari Om